when I like sketch it out, I try to like break it into a grid, four squares on top and four on bottom. And then I just try to make this like one unit. Makes it easy. I like that you're encouraged to push yourself. Like I think that's the goal most places you wanna grow in your job or wherever, whatever you're doing you wanna be growing in, but here it's you're like given a lot of like resources, encouragement, um, opportunity to do that like this. I have a little bit of downtime, so it's like, okay, gonna work on my type skills and being able to do it on a large scale. Um, before I was working here, I, I wasn't, it was just me, so there was like no feedback. Everything I was doing was just like looking at tutorials and what are other people doing and like trying to find good ways of doing whatever I was doing. But I love being on a team. You get a lot of feedback, you get a lot of good feedback, you get a lot of like not so great feedback, but whenever it's like constructive criticism, it's, it's like you're always making things better than like you thought you could, which is awesome. So the idea behind authenticity is greater than shine is basically we want to find a way to communicate the idea that being real is better than being perfect. People want a real experience. And in the world we live in now, it's hard to trust what's out there on social media. So my personal belief is just being real, being authentic. There is an element of uh, you're going to have to figure out what that means for you in that phrase inherently. But yeah, that's, that's why we say it. That's why we believe it. And we look for that character in people that we hire. And honestly, clients we partner with. We want to work with people who embrace that as well. And, uh, and we can work with people who want to just look perfect, but I think ultimately those relationships are short-lived. Go ahead. question. So in one sentence, I can summarize the goal of the rebrand. I would say it like this. The goal of the rebrand is to focus the value of what Rhino does more on the creative journey of discovering the story and then creating the thing, the artifact, the video, animation, photo, rather than having the focus be on the fact that we make video, animation, photo. Can you, in one sentence, summarize the goal of the rebrand? Make the visual representation of Rhino represent the evolution that's occurred in the past couple of years. Is that sort of the brand? Mm -hmm. Good. Can you describe the collaborative process between you and Ashley in three words? Three words. The collaborative process. Ashley hates me. <laughs> no. <laughs> three words? Yeah. Three separate words. Um, challenging, but worth it. Ooh, that's four. I'll take it though. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. What? Um, what was the biggest hang you guys had in this process? I would say. Well, the easy answer is the website part of it because we're not website designers. No one here at Rhino is a true web designer and that's not what we do. Building the website is always kind of problematic. Uh, our creative energy far surpasses our ability to produce on the website level. Yeah, the website was the biggest hang up. Uh, I think trying to like visually represent the entire company and not just um, one person or one person's style. Is there any particular aspect of the whole rebranding thing that you are just particularly all for geeked about. I'm geeked about the whole thing. Developing the new logo. Um, no, 
now I think I'm probably more proud of the website just because of the amount of time and attention and thought that was put into it. But the logo does look good on it. Your struggles are the best here, go ahead. Hello, Benjamin. You totally roasted yourself. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm drinking? What are you Ciders. drinking? Ciders. I'm drinking a delicious Mama Lilu cold brew coffee. From? From Mama Lilu's cold brew coffee stand. She, uh, I think, three, three years ago? Was it three years ago? I think it was three. Three years ago, she won um, the Maker's Mart thing at, uh, Catalyst, and then, uh, and she was just just slinging little bottles of cold brew, and now she's got a little shop downtown. And we stopped there for getting some taco babs, and uh, now I'm enjoying a refreshing beverage on this kind of sweaty day. Yeah, you look a little sweaty. Yeah. Down. Oh, you got a good, good weekly glisten. Schwitzing for the weekly. What's Nick doing? I'm trying to check out this uh, compass here. Oh, dude, it's broken. And it's, it's not, it's not working whatsoever. Sure. So, sure. So, make sure your compasses work, or else you'll get lost. That goes for moral compasses, too. Make sure you have a strong moral compass. Allergy season. Oh, am I right? Oh, no kicking. Sorry. Critique is something that is kind of fundamental to making stuff and making good stuff and doing good work. It's not just in the design space or the creative space. It's in business, it's in finance. I mean, there's there's so many fields. Anytime you're doing something new or, or developing a new point of view, critique is still really important. And it's a skill that very few people formally learn. Critiquing and being critical are totally different. Um, you're critical of people, you critique work. But first we have to kind of delineate art from sort of commercial design. Because critique on art or critique on artistic endeavor, um, especially if it's a personal artistic endeavor, is fundamentally different. Um, because in those cases, it can actually be pretty linked to the individual. On the commercial side though, if we're talking about enterprise design or enterprise commerce or enterprise um, creativity, the person is, is actually kind of irrelevant. And sort of this idea that I'm gonna critique based on what I like or I'm gonna give you feedback and it's, uh, it, it's an attack on you as an individual. I, frankly, I don't, I don't really buy any of that. In a commercial design exercise, I don't really care what people like. Whether or not you like something that's been designed against a brief is kind of irrelevant. It is either on brief or it's not on brief. So let's critique the work to the brief. Let's stop critiquing the work in isolation. It has to exist in a context. I don't really eat McDonald's, but especially not that one. I'll sometimes get a breakfast sandwich from there. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Do I want to talk about Cinema 4D? So we just, uh, Cinema 4D had their May the 4th Be With You sale, and we got Cinema 4D, 30% off. Super stoked about that. Um, for us, it's gonna be kind of a learning process and a journey in um, 
upping our capabilities to take on like legit 3D work, not just uh, the stuff we've been doing in After Effects up till now is technically called 2.5D. So it's like, um, it kind of fools you into thinking it's actual 3D work, but we've always been kind of uh, limited with what we're able to do with that. Um, this opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And um, Did you say a whole new world? A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. A whole new world. Excellent. What's your hard drive name? So my hard drive's name is Young Cheerio. And the name Young Cheerio comes from when I was in high school. And I had an alter ego and he's, he was a rapper. And you can probably find his stuff on YouTube. Yep. What? No, it's just, it's not me. Well, it's me rapping, but the image is of like Cheerio boxes. But it's my voice. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. Um, brace yourself. How many views is up to? Uh, 80 views. <laughs> Dang, man, you crossed 80. Hey, yo, what it do, yo? This your boy, Young Cheerio, man. Just make a little recording for y'all, for all my fans out there, man. I know y'all been showing me some love. Y'all been asking for some recordings, man. But y'all, I'm doing this for y'all, all right? Check it out. Lay out. <laughs> What was the last thing you said there? Oh my God. Hey, yo, what it do? This your boy, Young Cheerio. I know it's been a while, but yo, you can't blame me. I'm just a cereal. I come with the flow so crazy, call it a heart attack. Because I bring the pain so badly, man, that people trying to hold me back. Mm, but y'all yeah. can't stop me. I just keep on going. Call me a bulldozer, man. I just keep on wrecking. Mm. Yo, my flows are so crazy. We are finally doing an inventory of all the props that Rhino has accumulated over the past seven years, which is a lot of stuff. We have a slap chop from the Joe Hurtler Lonely Music video. We have the actual Snuggie from the shoot. We have a lot of dark horse things. Oh, nope, we just have a lot of stuff. Get a shot of my shirt. Favorite new shirt? Mario SNES. Oh, I mean NES. Yeah. Oh, 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 please. Don't sit on my stuff, Brent. Just kidding. I moved it. Can't do it. Right. Let's play karaoke. With Brendan. Test me. Sometimes All right. I feel I've got to oh. run away. I've got to I'm get waiting. away from the pain you drive into. Sorry, I'm not familiar. Okay. I'm like a classic rock kind of guy. Okay. We are the champion. No, no time, time for losers. Of the world, I can hear it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord, shot through the heart, and you're too 